I guess we have to start this. Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, good way of starting it. Yes, it's me, Stu. Joining me, we have Tom. And we have Paul from Grain Schooner. Evening. Who we've been calling for weeks, the Grainy Schooner. You have. And I realise I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I, 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 it's been called worse, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Uh, the fact that you've got all the right amount of letters and the right pronunciation for the most part is better than some mm. people. It's a start, yeah. for sure. It's just bad where I'm actually adding more letters to it, like, <laughs> <laughs> making life harder for yourself, too. Mm -hmm. And then just today, where it's like, oh, actually, I know his name. We could stop calling him Grainy now. <laughs> just G, the, the the G man. He yeah. prefers to first to go by told us before the show so we'll be calling him that so, so G, G Meister um yes. how are you feeling uh good, <laughs> excited good. to be here I am yes um I didn't realize Stu was such a was such a local until you know relatively recently so that's been quite nice mm -hmm. and yeah that's it when you say when we were arranging this this beer review is all right we'll send it to him and I'll, I'll drop it off at your house and then I, I remember because the, all your social media handles it's a uh, green schooner kdy yes Kirkori, which is like 10 minutes along the road from me so yes what language definitely... are you speaking now <laughs> what is sorry. this i'm just sorry i'm a little lost you start from the beginning again okay i know Something about beer we're not we're not hobbits tom jesus like it. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Sorry, but, I mean, I got to be honest. Yeah, but, I'm, I don't know if I have enough information to dispute that one. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer to be called goblins, okay? Jeez, <laughs> terrible. So, Paul has been kind enough to provide us with some beer for a blind beer review. Yep. Mm -hmm. See, me and Tom have been given the same beer. We're going to open it up, have a little drink, and guess what it is and whilst Very we do that we'll sit and quiz Paul about Green Schooner and yeah chaos ensues so let's, let's open hopefully this. hopefully <laughs> I'm gonna use my trusty uh, Belfield Brewery bar Shout blade out. thingy okay then explode use That's my good. trusty Thomas bottle opener shout out to him great guy <laughs> see you in the beers I'm going back to the caravan next month. I could buy you another if you want. Yay! Could you uh, spell my name right this time? It's uh, <laughs> it's not Thomas. It's hey, an A in there. It was whoever made it in the wee sweatshop called it that, <laughs> not me. It must have been a Spanish kid because uh, there's uh, one flick too many on there for me. Um, right. You got the, the aroma, it's... right? Oh, geez. Yeah. Let's just shot off that then. Uh. <laughs> How old is this? <laughs> it's pretty fresh. I was gonna wow. say I wouldn't blame you if there was like box and it's like man we've been meaning to get rid of this for ages. <laughs> Let's just roll some his way. Oh no, calling in sick tomorrow. I'll tell you that. Um, wow. Hmm. Oh, my guess of is it light beer or dark beers? Comp well, it's the, a dark beer. Yeah, I'm getting like a dark kind of roasted and smell to it. Keyboard. Stouty, portery smell. I was going to say, but looking at the yeah the color look. of it, yeah, it's a bit bit lighter than that, a bit brighter than that. Hmm, interesting. It's all right. We have to go for the sip. Let's do it. Cheers, bud. Cheers. Mm. All right. So you perplexed, Tom. Mm. <laughs> I said we have to use our senses here. So yeah, I, I still feel it tastes a bit stouty, portery. It's got quite a unexpected dryness to it for me, um, which is quite interesting. Oh, well, almost like a cranberry cranberry stout. I've won it. I've ever done it. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I, knew it. I, knew it. It. I don't know the answer. I'm just saying. Well, I don't think it's stout or porter. Well, it's lighter. Yeah, just like, what the No, but it's still it's see, still tight. Oh, one. I know. It, you you can see through the glass, and normally when it's porter for me, definitely it always seems to be pitch black. Pitch black. Yeah. So, but. It swings the direction of like a traditional ale rather than craft. 
I'd say so. Yeah, I'm definitely picking up a, a bit more hoppiness as well as a bit more dryness than you would expect with like a darker beer, which is interesting. Mm. And it's it would be too too dark to class it as a better. Would you say? Yeah, I think so. Unless it was maybe a, a stronger bitter. Or you decide to make some kind of gravy bitter or something, some interesting <laughs> new fang dazzle beverage for us to try, which I'm, I'm honoured to be the first person to to have a go on it. I mean, I could pour this on you, my Sunday dinner. You can, you can, and you will save half for uh, for the weekend. Hmm. That would kind of be the direction I would probably go. Kind of like a bit. I'm trying. I'm trying to picture like a Bellhaven best. Like what? What shade of brown was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't imagine it being a, a Bellhaven best. No, um, stop, no did you stop that. The green schooner. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> if it is, this is probably one of the best pranks I've, I've <laughs> ever been involved in. It's you John Smith with a spoonful of sugar in. Oh wow! Jeez, <laughs> that's that's creative. Well done. Do you sell this? <laughs> Tom, reach reach into like your taste buds in your head. Would would this be like a an eighty shilling? It's it, to me, it tastes a bit too dark to be an eighty shilling. To be honest, because again, I was gonna possibly say Scotch ale, but I, I don't think it's got enough su- like sweetness really that I would expect with a Scotch ale. Hmm. Mm. And I don't think it's got as much alcoholic warmth that I would expect with a Scotch ale either. Although yeah, it is quite is. it is quite alcoholic, but not as kind of heavy as as that. Well, no. I'm stumped. Should we just get pissed? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Paul, do you have like all the information in front of you? I do actually. I have it in. I actually brought home a bag with it, it with another one of it in. Oh, so, um, I'm trying to think. What what could the ABV be? Like, what volume do you think it is, Tom? Let's do like a Price Is Right. Five and a half. Are we? Do we? We want to reveal this at the very end, though. Do, do we? Do we want to quiz quiz Paul first and then do the reveal at the end? That probably sounds okay. like a better idea, doesn't it? Like, yeah. I would let's, say let's do that. But yeah, what do you think on the on the ABV? I feel it would be under five point five. Do you oh, reckon? It's really smooth to drink, so you might be just mm. slinging us like a, a nine, and we're just like, can it tell? <laughs> but. I'm no. <laughs> I can't even put up a fight on this, this one. I've had enough. Um, sorry, right, let's let that rest. <laughs> let it come to us. Yeah. So, um, did you prepare questions, Tom? Uh, yep, got them right here. No, Stu, you said you were going <laughs> to do them last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting from that. From me, I said I was busy. I had things to do. No, we we did say we were gonna we were gonna kind of freestyle it a little bit, uh, okay. let the conversation just flow rather than have a formal interview. But if you are interested, you do have the job. Well done. Excellent. You start on Monday. Um, but yeah, Paul, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, but in the company and how it all started. So i don't want to say the seeds of it were boring but definitely you know i've spent years working in beer i used to i did i used to live in edinburgh and i did several years working for the bow bar on victoria street which is one of the most classic iconic cask beer bars of within edinburgh it's mm. you know the classic wood paneled weird old memorabilia and enough whiskey bo- more whiskey bottles than there are days in the year sort of thing so that that's great i don't want to say it, it started off this so I was already into beer, you know, for a good few years before that. Uh, you know, I started getting into beer when Cromarty's first stopped, popped up, and uh, you know that sort of crowd. Going back to 2012, I there was a guy that I used to drink with, and he used to work in the old homebrew store over the west, south side of Edinburgh. So we used to go to the Cali Sample Rooms, um, and that you know that was when you know Tiny Rebel was first starting to take off, and all that sort of crowd. We we're really good looking. You know, it's weird to say, oh, we're really looking back now, but that's like ten years ago that they were. You know, Tiny Rebel were first yeah. making noise at all. Really, not just up this way, just at all. They were making noise. So we worked. So I did three years at the Bow Bar. Nearly um, ended up working at Cloisters and Stockbridge Tap because they're all the same company. 
So that so you know there was the old shift I pulled there, um, and this was when they were still. I don't want to say necessarily traditional pubs, but the, you know the beer list was was never all the time wacky. It was never a perpetual beer festival every single day. Um, whereas you know you went to the Hanging Bats or you know a place like that or a brew, or the old Brew Dog down on uh, the Calgate, and they felt like every day was a beer festival. Which when you were first getting into beer, you're like, oh, this is great. There's this is you know really heavily hopped. This is imported. This is mm-hmm. you know what this that and the other thing. You know whatever sort of wild gimmick you, whatever sort of ad lib you want to throw on to the end mm. of it um but they sort of, you know they still sort of walk that line of hey this is crap but without the silly bits at the end of it that make mm. it expensive and undrinkable and that sort of thing you know the sort of beers you're like right i've had a third i physically can't think of drinking any more of it because because mm. because 14 and made with weasel shit coffee and stuff like that oh, okay <laughs> or, yeah. you know, i do i do like that blend it's pretty good <laughs> But it's I'm not, not drinking Colombian. I drink uh, weasel shit. It's yeah, it's not, nice. it's not. It's not vegan friendly. I'll tell you that. Much. Oh, it's not. Yeah, God it's not damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and then I decided I did, uh, that I really liked having evenings to myself, and uh, ended up working for Fallon Brewing for about six months doing sales and distro. So, and of course, they just sadly went under a few months ago, which is a great shame, great loss to to beer in Scotland, and that was. Mm. That's a sort of weird time for them because they were they were kind of like oh we've hit this level but we can't don't know how we break through to the sort of next level for you know sustainability you know it was like, kind of like we've got all this beer and we're sort of shifting through it what do we do next so we so but I spent all my time on the road I really I very rarely actually had time to do any proper sales you know I missed coming up to five I didn't get through to Dundee as anywhere near as much as I would like so I was just delivering all the time admittedly I got to see some great places we used to deliver to up Korean Larrick Way and uh, uh, not quite to Oban, but definitely up to Arakur and you know that just outside of Glasgow, sort of the Trossachs sort of region. So it was great driving a van around, going, "Oh, this is pretty great yeah. countryside." And then I'm like, "Oh, I still got to drive home after a whole day of driving." Um, <laughs> so I ended up, ended up back in bar work and ended up at the Guildford Arms, which once again, classic iconic Edinburgh pub. And then 2020, this this thing happened. I don't quite know what happened, but pubs all just randomly shut down in March 2020. I still don't know what happened there. Um, no idea. I think it was great, like I, the beer or something. Yeah, absolutely. I believe I believe that was the case, yes. And it was, there was a mild irony. We'd already closed the Guildford Arms for about a week and a half just to do a renovation. So we all, our last working day for everyone was pretty much the, Eng- the Scotland-France home rugby match. And it was a really quiet day. And I was like, hmm, okay this is maybe this is something serious to consider because up until that point everybody had been kind of like eh, it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine mm. so i ended up coming through when lockdown happened and staying with my now partner because her place was well this place was much nicer than my place which was a small box room in a flat in leith and it was was particularly cold she was like yeah do you want to stay here because this place is nicer i'm like yeah i think i will so i ended up just never re- le- really leaving so I ended up getting a, getting a job in a pub in here in Kirkcaldy called the Harbour Bar, which closed down last year after the owner passed away. But I only really got two months of work in there because then another lockdown happened, uh, well, semi-lockdown. The pubs were pubs were all closed. We were, t- we were told it was three weeks, and it was kind of like you know, that became near, near enough six months, which you know, real real close in time time frames there. But when I came through, when I moved through, I was kind of like, oh, the one thing Kirkcaldy doesn't have is a proper bottle shop. And it just sort of started forming from there. And I was kind of like, right, cool. How do I do this? But I couldn't quite make the plan work. I could because I was trying to do everything off furlough, which when you're you know, 80 percent of not very much is still not very much. So I ended up re-pitching and hiring a you know, renting an office space and went online instead because the idea because I called it Green Schooner because I thought I was being smart with this. And every time I have to explain, it, I go. Oh, this was so stupid. <laughs> why did why didn't I just call it the Hop Stop Bottle Shop or some other you know hop based pun or something? I thought you know, I thought I was being smarter because Kirkcaldy historically has been a massive grain export in town. All of the harbour is built to export grain. Um, the site, the I don't know how well your viewers know Kirkcaldy, but if you go where Cars Flour Mill is in Kirkcaldy. The site that looks like the really nice house set into the hill is the is an old distillery. 
So it's so it's got this history of grain of either exporting or turning it into you know hooch essentially. Um, and my other thought was going, oh, I'll be a bottle shop, you know, with a bit of a bar space, you know, kind of doing the, uh, I always say the hot, the bottle shop side of Salt Horse in Edinburgh, but Grunt and Growler and that sort of, you know, that sort of hybrid oh, yeah. model. So it's like, oh, Schooner's great because it's a boat pun and it's also a measurement of beer. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I say, mm. when I thought of it, I was like, yeah, this is brilliant. This is funny and dynamic. And every time, like I say, every time I explain it, I go, no. Nah. No, I really, I really. <laughs> you have like a little card. It's like green. So what's that? I was like, well, here. Hang. It's like a business card, but it's just like a wee story <laughs> explaining it. Just, you've just got a pamphlet like the guys that post, you know, the the pizza menus to the door, sir. Yeah. Like, exactly. Actually, hang on, hang on. I actually have a I actually have a small book here. It's about the size of War and Peace by Tolstoy. I'll give you the rundown of it. And Good marketing tactics. Absolutely, absolutely. Giving away books. That's not, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Educating the masses. It's good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like and, you know, I, you know, between and amongst all that, I was kind of trying to find what my philo- philosophy for the beers, I, you know, I didn't want to use the phrase curating the selection, but that's definitely effectively that is the description mm-hmm. of what, you know, I stock on the website is beers that and breweries that I like for whatever reason. It's, you know, it's, you know, I didn't want to have beer where I'd go, well, I don't really care for it, but everybody else likes it, so I'm going to stock it. It's, you know, I can't get my head into being that kind of guy. I've never, you know, I'd make a really terrible car salesman. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, yeah, this car's great, but it is a bit pricey. Go with the lemon instead. Go, <laughs> it's go a great with... car, it just doesn't have an exhaust. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a... <laughs> well, I'd still make a great car salesman because I'd just be selling pr- pricey hatchbacks at that point. <laughs> Or the exhaust is a former beer can. Um, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking outside the box there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, because I'm thinking inside a tin mostly, but <laughs> I'm thinking inside the box. Well done. <laughs> so yeah, the the beers, like I say, it's a reflection. Not I don't want to say necessarily a reflection of what I like to drink. You know, we were talking before we started recording. Well, when I was talking there. You know about beers that are you know these big beers with 100 at you know 100 added extra flavors it's just that's just not what i, I enjoy and i don't see something a bit simpler yeah and it, sometimes there's more complexity complexity in it being a simpler recipe because it's you know mm. you know we, we look at you know up top you know you look at a lot of german style beers a lot of lagers and you go okay cool this is four ingredients they let it sit in a tank for several weeks until it tastes brilliant mm. but then the complexity is and you know you know the fact that they sat on that information for years and the all the technology in germany's grown up around that concept around the concept of conditioning you know mm. it's not the first time i've heard of a german brew kit being sent somewhere and the engineers going out and seeing how much hops are being thrown into it and then you know nearly shitting a brick because they go oh no this wasn't designed for this wasn't designed for this this mm-hmm. wasn't designed for this was designed with this idea in mind, and here you are throwing in every hot no into magic, just ramming it in. What do you mean you threw a carrot cake in there? <laughs> exactly. It, was, it wasn't made for throwing in chicken wings. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't know of any brew kit. I don't know of any brew kit that does. It, it just looks like kitchen equipment by that point. So we start doing. <laughs> so how are you getting on with the beer? Where have you? Um... I feel like I'm almost done in my head. I'm still like, right, I'm listening to Paul, but is this a brown ale? (laughs) Is this Mm. scotch? It's not sweet enough to be brown ale, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. But. mm, Stumped. That's it, Tom. We're going to have to hang up our earphones. (laughs) I think think it's a 5.5% smoked black ipa <laughs> that's 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 my uneducated guess do you want me to do you want me to pull the beer out of the bag just yet and reveal you, it? well what's I'll, your I'll, final my, guess to my guess is oh, i need to pick a side is it a brownie or is it an 80 shilling i would say it, it's like a five percent 80 shilling okay well, I can reveal from the wonderful bag of truth, it is actually a mild ale oh, from from uh, Blunt Chisel. Blunt Chisel, Miner's wow. Mild. Three and a half percent. Mild. No, three way. and a half. Yeah. See, 
that's it when we're drinking. I was like, I feel like it doesn't have a strong alcohol volume, mm-hmm. but then it's, it's deceptive because the sealer is too high and that makes it incredibly smooth. Mm. But being traditional, it should have been lower. So yeah, there's there's a smokiness and a dryness to it that threw me off a little bit. But it definitely tastes uh, a bit stronger than three point five to me personally. But I don't know how you feel, Stu. I I'm surprised, but that was actually a really nice drink. Mm. Went down uh, very easily. <laughs> Now, I have tried some of uh, Blunt Chisel's beers before. I I caught up with them at uh, like a Bowhouse Christmas market, mm-hmm. and they had a stall there. But I didn't get the the is it Miner's Mild. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the Dolly, which I think was their double IPA. Uh, New, no, England, New England IPA. New England, and oh, there's another one. But it wasn't the mild anyway. Um, and yeah, I was really surprised at how good these beers were. Yeah, they caught, caught me off guard because before I moved to Fife, I never heard of the name Blood Chisel before. And even mm-hmm. in advance of that, you know, you know, looking at other Fife breweries, I'd never come across Inner Bay before until I came over. Yeah, yeah. Because I would go through to Colin at Caledonian Craft and get some bottles and stuff like that, mm-hmm. various lockdowns. So that's kind of where those names came up and, you know, being... You know, the other part of the philosophy was to promote breweries that are, I don't want to say stuck in their area, but they wouldn't necessarily have the ability or the reason to push further than where they are and with where they're right. at. Mm-hmm. And Inner Bay, uh, Kate Inner Bay, she brews on a one barrel system. And as far as I can work out, the entire brewery is a small cupboard in her house, more or less. <laughs> everything, yeah. every, everything she said sort of suggests it's no bigger than, than a utility room. Mm-hmm. And yet, when you see the bottles, it looks like it's actually quite a professional presentation. Mm. It's got that nice label over the over the cap where it, it explains everything you need to know about the beer. Uh, you would just imagine that on the shelf in Sainsbury's and Little's mm. as well as the others. Mm. Oh well, Tom, um, we both lost. Well, Unlike yeah. Beer Wars, where you know I'm on a on a hot streak at the now, moment. No, no. We sadly both, <laughs> Don't worry. both lost this one. Yeah, disappointing. <laughs> um, will we ever win it. this? So. I don't know. I don't know. But we should definitely do this again very soon. But you know, with with less less brown tape next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now is probably the best time uh, for yourself, Paul, to. I was, I was going to say plug your wares, but that doesn't sound quite right. Just promote yourself. Make sure people yes. know where plug to find whatever out. Whatever you're wearing, just plug it right now. Is this is this uh, a top man? Top man number is this? This is a nice. This is a H and M. Guys, go to the no website idea. to get that. Headphones available from uh, Zavi fifty nine ninety nine. Go and check that out. Use the uh, code Logalogs ninety for ninety percent off, guys. Um, <laughs> check, check that out. Um, <laughs> Are you ending the video there? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot them, but <laughs> yeah, and it'll last. Um, no, um, greenschooner.beer is where to find all green schooner sort of thing. There's options to sign up the newsletter. Yeah, that's the URL for the sort of technologically unadvanced who somehow managed to find a YouTube video of three guys talking about beer. Um, <laughs> Stranger things have happened. They have indeed. They have indeed. Um, there is a 20% sale on until the end of July because I can't really announce where the, the shop is moving to just yet because we're still working on a few sort of legal bits and pieces and some other sort of stuff. I was hoping to have this all nailed down by now, but mm. it's the, it, you know, you have to live by the rule of pie. Anything you think will take X amount of time just times it by three. Just mm. every time. I was hoping to be already into a shop space, but it turns out the shop space wasn't really fit for human habitation, um, which is a shame. So the plan had to be a little adjusted from there and kind of go back to it. The Facebook and Instagram are Green Schooner KDY. The, the Twitter is just Green Schooner, all one word, because I didn't think to put KDY in it at that time, but mm, there, there we go, and there it is. And that's where everything is. That's where I put, you know, Twitter is usually where I post slightly more funnier concepts and the occasional shit post. Um, the newsletter usually comes with some 
the newsletter is usually some kind of musical reference or was for about three solid months i was just making references to emo songs because i could uh, <laughs> um i think that's kind of the plugs yes um mm. the, Inst the instagram and facebook is usually pretty good but as is the nature of the algorithm you never see what's going on with them until about two days later and the information's already old mm -hmm. so twitter is usually the best place for sort of updates and like i say sarcasm is 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 definitely more prominent there <laughs> and yeah definitely hit up the website and and sign up for the newsletter because that's how i get a lot of like reminders because it always just pops up and go oh yeah and they're doing this and yeah it's a bit hot today isn't it so <laughs> like <laughs> I, I honestly thought about making the next three four weeks just all letter kenny references it's one of my favorite tv shows that uh comes from canada because right. it's just because it's just been hot the last week or two that's what that one was last week was a reference to was letter kenny they, they called it scorcher season <laughs> <laughs> and of course i'm a huge huge proponent uh at the you know preacher of shocker hopper grapefruit rattler right uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a tongue twister yes it is it's, an, it's just it's just a natural flow and bit of prose there <laughs> but yes i'm glad you enjoyed it you were, you guys were cert you were circling what the beer was for so long but you just weren't quite on i i, I forgot mild was a style <laughs> Look, i was like <laughs> how <a> could few... <laughs> you <laughs> I know, a few months ago it seemed to be like the hot topic everyone seemed to be looking for milds mm -hmm. it's like we've been drinking bands since mild for ages i know i'll be <laughs> trading in my beer reviewers card tomorrow morning first I'd, thing i promise i'd be handing in the midlanders card never mind the beer reviewer <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Well, just top myself now what's what's the big mild brand down there oh, what's uh one? like she just said banks is yeah that's yeah the, that's the big one well i'll go and hang myself now guys all right we'll <laughs> see you later it's been a pleasure bye <laughs>